Hi and welcome everyone. In this lesson, we will talk about the distance between BV or solar uh, panels rows. So if you remember, we said before that each row of panels, there is a distance between them to avoid the shading effect or the shading effect. So the distance between them, we said before, it is approximately three to four times the height of the panel right however i would like to get it more accurately i would like to get the correct answer for each location and each situation so how can we do this first as you can see here here we have an example we have our angle the tilt angle equal to 15 degrees and of course this one have the same tilt angle of 15 degrees and we have the width of the panel itself is 39.41 inches. This is the width of the panel itself. Okay, so what are we going to do? First step is that we would like to get the inter-row spacing for your modules. So what does this mean? What I mean is that I would like first to get the distance from here. You see this point here, the point corresponding to here, from here to here. So that is the first distance that I would like to get. Then I will add this distance to get the total distance, which is the module row distance. So the first step that we are going to get is that this height, I would like to get this height. So as you can see, we have 15 degrees and we have 39.41. So as you can see from here, from uh, trigonometry, that sine, sine beta or sine the delta angle is equal to opposite. Opposite sine of the angle is opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So we have uh, opposite, which is H and the hypotenuse which is the width so the height if i would like to get the height it will be sine peta which is a delta angle multiplied by the width of the solar panel so as you can see sine delta angle multiplied the module width it will be uh, give us the angles and these angles will be in degrees not radians so as you can see in this example, we have sine 15 degrees multiplied by 39.41 uh, equal to 10 uh, inches. Okay, so the height here is 10 inches. Now, what is the second step? Second step is that we would like to get the shadow angle or the sun elevation angle. So what is this angle? So as you can see in this figure here, so we obtain the first step is that we obtained H. Okay. Now what I would like to get is called the shadow angle or called the sun elevation angle. So as you can see, when the sun falls on the panel, you can see there is a shadow here, here at this point, all of this is shadow. And you can see that the sun form is an angle with the horizontal line called shadow angle or the sun elevation angle. Sometimes the sun can be like here in this situation and falls on the panel. So it will form a shadow like this. This part will be shadow and this will be the new sun elevation angle. So what I would like to get is the worst case which means the smallest shadow angle that gives us the largest shadow. Okay. So I need the worst location at which it will give us large shadow, the worst case. Okay. So in order to do this, we need something which is called the sun chart. This chart differs from one location to another. So as you can see, we are going to first to go to this website. This is a very important website that everyone uses, Sunshot program. Of course, you can go to this website using the 
uh, slides or the PDF slides that you have in the course. After going to this website and entering the location details, such as the latitude, the longitude, um, the time zone, after doing all of this, you will get a chart for your own location, like this. Now, what does this chart represent? This gives us the sun elevation, okay, sun elevation throughout the whole year and gives us also the solar azimuth from east to east, the um, uh, movement of the sun from east to west, okay. So as you can see here, we have 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and until 7 p.m. So as you can see, what happens is that as time passes, first, each of these lines, each of these blue lines representing a month. As you can see, June 21, May 21, uh, April 20. What, what does this mean? It means that 20th of April, uh, 20 March, uh, February 20, Jan 21, uh, December uh, 21. So what does this mean? For example, this one, it means the day 21 of June. 21 of June, the day and the month. So this is a 20 day of April, 20 day of March, and so on. Okay? So for example, let's look at June 21, this big one. So as you can see, starting from 5 p.m., the sun will start at 60 degrees azimuth and zero sun elevation angle. As the time passes, the azimuth will increase. Okay, keeps increasing from east to west uh, or uh, west, not west, west. <laughs> okay, east and west. So it starts from here going to the 100 degrees. So as you can see, goes like this. So the sun elevation will start increasing. As you can see here, elevation of the sun starts increasing as the time passes until reaching the maximum azimuth. Okay, this happens through each day of the month. Now, you have to understand that the worst case is that, or the worst case scenario when the sun is very, very close to Earth is at December 21. Okay, December 21 for the worst case scenario. So as you can see here, if you look at this figure, this one is uh, December um, uh, 21. Okay, so in this case, what are we going to do? We are going to pick this curve. You can see this big curve. Okay, this one. This is the same case for any location. Now, what is the next step? You are going to take the curve of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Then you are going to go like this until the intersection here with this 21 December uh, curve. Here, like this, go here, okay? So as you can see, the intersection between the time frame and the December 21 curve is this point and this point okay now what is the next step we are going to provide a horizontal line okay we are going to provide a horizontal line from here like this passing through these two points until we intersect with the sun elevation so this will give us the solar elevation angle at the worst case which will give us the largest shadow. So here this intersection with the line gives us 17 degrees. So as you can see here, the intersection gives us 17 degrees. Okay, now 17 degrees, as you remember from the curve here, so the shadow angle here in the worst case is 17 degrees. So how will this help us? So as you can see in 17 degrees, and we have the height, which is 10 inches. So from this triangle, this triangle here, this one, okay, 90 degrees. 
from this triangle we can get the distance from here to here right so how it will be tan 17 gives us tan 17 is the opposite which is a 10 inches or h divided by the adjacent which is a, a rho distance okay distance from here to here so as you can see here module row spacing what does module row spacing mean here it means the distance from here to here okay the spacing between the two modules not the whole distance okay just this distance okay it will be h which is the height divided by 1017 gives us 33 inches so this distance here this distance here is 33 inches okay what distance exactly from here to here okay however however there is something which is really really important as you can see is that the sun itself its location it changes with time okay you can see the solar azimuth for the location of the sun itself it changes through the whole time from 9 a.m to 3 p.m and our uh, bv panels are installed for example at 180 degrees azimuth right so there is a relative azimuth between them or a relative angle between them so we need something which is called the azimuth correction so how can we get this you can see that the sun is moving through the whole time however our panels are installed at a fixed angle from the north if you remember the orientation that we discussed in the previous lesson so what are we going to do simply you are going to take this space from here which is at 3 p.m to 9 p.m this angle okay the difference between this two and divided by two okay to give us this distance and this distance so you will find that this angle which is the difference between this angle and this one is 44 degrees and between here and here is 44 degrees so 44 degrees is called the azimuth correction angle so how can i use this you can see this angle what are we going to do with it this will give us the minimum distance so as you can see the 33 inches is excess distance okay more than required so how i get so how can i get the minimum value by using the correction so in order to do the correction we will do like this so the minimum module row spacing which is distance from here to here will be the 33 inches which we just obtained multiplied by cosine the azimuth correction angle which is 44 degrees this will give us a smaller distance of 24 so instead of having a big distance of 33 inches we can just take 24 inches so we reduced uh, reduced the distance required between two uh, modules okay or between two rows now we obtained this distance right which is at 24 inches now i would like to get the module row distance the whole distance it will be the 24 plus this part which is 39 or the width of a module multiplied by cosine 15 so it will be like this so the row width which is a minimum would equal to minimum module row spacing which is at 24 inches that we just obtained plus cosine delta angle multiplied module width so you can see cosine of this 15 degrees multiplied by 39 gives us this distance here okay this distance so by taking this distance and adding it to this one we will get the whole distance so it gives us a minimum row width of 62 inches
okay now as you can see as you can see 62 inches which is the distance from here to here right now let's look at the height we said before that the distance between two rows is at least three to four times the height so three to four times the height it will give us what it will give us 30 to 40 inches which is not enough okay that's why we need to do this calculation in order to get the correct module row distance okay okay so what are we going to do next now what we are going to do is that i would like to show you how can you get this curve this is the important part how can i get this curve to get the sun elevation angle so let's go to the website that i just showed you and let's see how can we get this curve okay so if you go to the website that i just showed you okay sun pass shot program so let's refresh this page okay so we have this the first thing that you are going to do is that you enter the latitude and longitude of your own location and remember in degrees so again we will use the power data access uh, viewer from nasa similar as we did before here is uh, my own location in cairo egypt so i'm going to take this uh, longitude here or the latitude sorry the latitude first one is the latitude and the longitude okay latitude longitude latitude and longitude okay so uh, i added here okay okay and you can add also the zip code if you are in the us okay so we add the first latitude and longitude second thing that we are going to do is that i'm going to specify the time zone so you can see here the time zone in utc so what i did is simply i typed in google utc egypt time which as you can see it is plus two hours you can do the same for your own location so i will go here and just type plus two utc plus two hours now you will keep everything as it is don't worry about anything and just type this verification number okay and then create chart then click here to download your uh, pdf okay 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 so now we have this chart let's uh, rotate it okay view uh, rot rotate view clockwise okay like this so you can see this is the figure for the altitude and longitude as you said for the time zone okay as you can see here so you can see that we have the 9 a.m and the 3 p.m then we will make a horizontal line here and then we will get the intersection angle then we are going to uh, measure the uh, azimuths from here to here and divide it by two to get the correction angle very easy right so this will help you in the end uh, in obtaining the tilt angle not the tilt angle the distance between two rows in a bv system okay so i hope this lesson was helpful for you